Hey guys, Chelsea from Attention to Details, and today in the shop we are working on this Toyota RAV4. Now, this is a customer that I actually ran into her several months back. We started talking about my detailing business. She was someone that I actually went to college with, and she was saying that she has some issues with black dots all over the exterior of her vehicle, and that it's to the point they can't come off with a wash. Uh, she doesn't know how to remove them. And so I immediately said, this probably artillery fungus. And she's like, said what? And I said, it's actually a fancy term for mold spores. And they actually get on your vehicle a lot of time from stale mulch. If you park near a kind of a curb that has a lot of mulch on it, or maybe a landscaper comes through and puts down fresh mulch, there's a lot of mold spores that can be within that mulch and it gets activated. You'll notice it, it can be on buildings, it can be on vehicles, but it just lands wherever it wants to and it can be a bugger to get off. Normally, you know, a good tip is just kind of take your fingernail, scratch the top of it off if it's not been on there for too long. Uh, maybe take a light clay bar treatment to it and you should be good to go. But this is actually pretty severe and it's been on there for months because I saw her, I think, back in spring. So it's been on there all summer long. So let's go ahead. I'm going to show some of the issues that are going on with this paint and then we're going to go ahead and share with you guys how to address them because this actually has a lot of issues going on in the paint other than just artillery fungus. So I'm going to show you guys how to identify and then how to treat all of these issues on your car paint. So let's see what's going on. So right off the bat, you can see we've got kind of a Dalmatian look going on with this vehicle. And hopefully I'm not moving too fast for you guys, but you can just see the artillery fungus or the mold spores, they are just everywhere. And you can actually kind of take your fingernail and pop the top of them off. I know sometimes detailers will, you'll say, you know, oh, you're being super aggressive. We are going to actually polish this vehicle when we are all said and done because whatever method I use, be it a plastic scraper, be it a heavy solvent based kind of tar and sap remover, or even if I have to do a heavy clay bar treatment to remove all of this, uh, we're probably not going to get a hundred percent with that method just because it is everywhere. Uh, so we're also going to do kind of a cleaner wax afterwards just to try to help remove any that might be residual staining. But I'm not going to have time to literally sit here and pop the top off of every single one of these. That's probably why the customer said she can't do it because you'd probably need to have a few hours on your hand just to be able to pop the tops off and then from there be able to do a little bit of an easier treatment. But there's also some other issues going on with this vehicle. Namely, you can see some right here. This yellow drip right there, you might be saying, oh, it could be sap, but it could also be bee poop. Bee poop can actually be really difficult to remove. A good bug and tar remover can actually help remove that or just sometimes your finger. But the other issues that is going on with this vehicle is we have some rail dust or ferrous metal. You can see all these little orange specks back here, especially right here, kind of gathering around the seal of the window. If we were to let that sit on there over time, that's actually going to turn to rust. So we're gonna go ahead, a clay bar treatment is actually going to do wonders for all of this that's going on the vehicle. Now, what is a clay bar? It is essentially uh, what you are thinking. It's kind of a bar of clay. It's not like molding clay. It's not the type of clay your kids play with. But you want to have a washed surface first. Try to get off as much of the loose dirt off of your vehicle. And then you need some sort of lubricant. You can use a clay lubricant or a quick detail. I like to use soap. It's lubricating enough. And just go over it back and forth. A lot of times, and I don't know if you can hear because there's a plane going on overhead. But if we were to come in close, you hear that grit? That is all of the bonded contaminants on the surface of the paint. When you come in with your clay bar treatment, you're essentially abrading it off. That's why we want to polish at the end, but you're abrading off all of those bonded contaminants so that your finish is going to sound silky smooth. You can also use a clay towel or even a clay pad on a dual action polisher if it is severe. But we do have a lot of issues going on from bee poop. We've got sap. We've got some mold and mildew that have accumulated because the customer hasn't done a good contact wash. This looks like it's just a bunch of stuff that's accumulating and starting to drip down and stain. We need to do a really good cleaning. We've got a lot of road film. That's kind of these streaks here. And a lot of times you'll notice that 
in areas like your door handles because you're going to have dirt gathered behind that. And if you're not cleaning your vehicle a lot, whenever you have that dirt, it's just going to settle there. It's just going to kind of settle there. And then when it rains, all that dirt just kind of drips out. So a good tip is just when you wash your vehicle, just pull your door handles out a little bit, blast it out really good. That'll help prevent some of that. But you definitely want to make sure you're doing a good contact wash because over time, that film can actually stain your paint and eat into the clear coat. I have seen it happen before. So we've got some tar. You can notice we have some more rail dust on these lower panels. And if I were to try to, it's actually like gritty to the sound. We do have a little bit of tar. A lot of that will come off with a good contact wash. So all in all, I'm not seeing any huge issues as far as like clear coat staining. We just have some sap. We have a ton of artillery fungus. We have a lot of staining on our paint and just road film that has really accumulated. So we're gonna do our tires, wheels, and wheel wells, get those done. We're gonna come in and do a good contact wash. That's gonna remove a majority of the road film and just the staining on the paint, really do a good job of brightening it. And then we're gonna go ahead and start addressing some of this artillery fungus. I know it's not gonna be an easy task, so hopefully we can find a quick solution that's gonna help us speed through this process, but don't anticipate it being a quick process, period. So let's go ahead and get her washed. When it comes to washing this vehicle, you want to be able to have a soap that's gonna fit the purpose that you're looking for. If we were just kind of maintaining a vehicle, we could use something like the Meguiar's Ceramic Wash and Wax. I just picked this up. I'm gonna be doing some tests on that in the future, but it looks promising. You can use something like Turtle Wax, their Pure Wash. Absolutely love this stuff. Really, really uh, nice lubricity. Um, the name seriously fits it perfectly, slick and slide. The one that I want to use today, Meguiar's discontinued it, and I'm really mad about it. I have been able to pick up a few random bottles over the years, and I almost don't use it because I don't want to <laughs> lose it because they discontinued it. But Meguiar's, if you're watching this, please bring this back. This was a fantastic soap to be able to also polish away some more stuck-on debris. I don't feel like the uh, consumer really understood the purpose of this, but detailers, I feel, would really benefit from a product like this. So Meguiar's, if you are watching this, please bring this back into your pro detailer line because this stuff was amazing. We're actually going to use Wash Chem's Pro 100 as a foaming pre-soak. This is a um, really high alkaline soap. You can almost use this as a touchless wash. A lot of uh, people within like truck washes will use products like this. Uh, you don't necessarily want to skimp on the product. You need almost like four to eight ounces in your foam can and foam it on, let it sit. So we're going to use something like this to pre-soak our vehicle that's going to help remove road film as well as help loosen some of the uh, artillery fungus. You need something almost solvent-based to be able to go after what we're looking at. That's why I wish I'm, I might just see how this responds just to give me a little bit more bite to my wash method. But essentially, once we are done washing our vehicle, then we are going to use this as our chemical decon. This is Turtle Wax Hybrid Solutions Pro, their rapid decon, a wheel cleaner as well as iron remover. Yes, you can use this on the paint just like the Jay Leno's Garage. And because I used it all up, I actually just picked up a couple gallons but of this. You can also pick this up at Car Supplies Warehouse. For those of you that are looking for a really effective wheel cleaner slash iron remover, this stuff works really well on paint. I'll show you that in a few minutes. But when it comes to washing this vehicle, we don't just want to grab a standard wash and wax or even Dawn degreasing soap. We want something with a little bit more punch to it to help us loosen that artillery fungus.
can I just say, I didn't know what foam was <laughs> until I got this. There's a reason why it's the number one in the detailing industry, and there's a reason why all the professionals absolutely love this foam kit. I have a pressure wash this side here. Let me just show you if I can pan over. We've got about, I would say, 25% of the artillery fungus blasted off with water alone. Is that the chemical working? Does that mean that they weren't super aggressive? I don't know, but it actually, I do believe that it helped loosen a lot of it. Maybe just hitting it repeated times with water has kind of loosened it. I know some people have said that you can use like hot water and uh, a good soap can can loosen it. Maybe that's where the steam comes into play. Maybe this stuff does not like heat. But again, heat and clear coat don't always mix well together because you could have some issues. This is just cold water that I'm using and it's still doing a decent job. So just pointing out some observations. But if I come in over here and just kind of take my time with rinsing it, it's getting all the sap, all the bug debris off, all the road film. It's doing a really nice job of pre-treating our vehicle. All right, so we washed everything. We went over it real quick with the clay pad just to kind of get the bulk of it. Um, Everything feels smooth. What's left behind is kind of really bonded. And the reason I chose the Turtle Wax Pure Soap is because it does have so much lubrication. I mean, it's like, it's almost like oil on your hand. It feels like butter. It literally has just that much lubrication. And I really need that in this moment. So we're kind of just keeping fresh soap on the surface. I've got my plastic scraper. Let me switch hands actually. Hopefully the camera doesn't slide out of my hands. And we're just very gently coming in. This is where it's gonna take some time because even with my clay towel, I wasn't able to get, I could go over and over and over every single little one. It's working, it's taking a lot of time. This plastic scraper, if I come in, just kind of get under it. Very, very gentle. I am not gouging, I'm not pressing. Am I damaging or gonna, lightly scratch possibly but we are going to polish afterwards so the polish that i do is going to remove what little scratches i have a clay towel here that's going to do kind of the same amount of work maybe a little bit less aggressive it's kind of just popping the tops off of the ones that were still pretty stuck on you can hear that grit and as we go over it it's getting smoother I'm not being aggressive with this scraper. And I'm using that soap to my benefit. This is an extremely slick soap. It's actually perfect for a moment like this. And it's gonna take some time. We're gonna try actually, this is stoner tar and sap remover. This is kind of a solvent based. My hands are so slippery. I'm gonna see. That actually is working. It's removing them. You don't wanna use this stuff on single stage paint at all. I learned that the hard way the other day. It was fixable, but I learned that the hard way. I had a vehicle that I didn't know it had single stage paint on it. It was a newer vehicle, but it was white. And uh, had a lot of bee poop on it. And this stuff did a great job at getting it off, but it started to also go after the single stage paint. So we kind of had to abort, stop, and uh, reroute. I'm gonna need a lot of it. So I'm trying to keep, keep it on the microfiber. It's doing a good job. And I don't mind 
if I have to scrub it this way, I'd rather scrub it with a microfiber than a razor or a clay bar. This is a lot more forgiving on our paint. All right, we're gonna try our clay towel again. And see if that loosened things a little bit more for us. Oh yeah, that made it a lot easier when I come in and do my clay towel now. I kind of pre-moistened it. Alright. Gonna take time. Be patient. All this purple means we've got rail dust or metal shavings that have embedded with the paint. You may not be able to see all of it. Let that sit. This chemical is helping to break the bond. So then we can come in with either a clay bar or a clay towel. I like the clay towel because it's just a lot faster. And now we've removed all of that bonded contaminants. And the clay towel also is helping us to remove a lot of this artillery fungus or mold spores that are all over this vehicle. But it is cleaning up really nicely. All these orange spots that we had back here, we've now re removed them and we've actually prevented rust. You can just see it's always the worst on your trunk because that's where all your dirt gets kicked up onto. when we ran our finger over the surface you could hear the grit now silky smooth and completely silent we'll come behind afterwards and polish and we'll have clean decontaminated polished and sealed paint in one very quick process Quickish. We are on the home stretch with removing these black bumps off of our paint. What exactly are they again? Artillery fungus or mold spores from mulch. If you're having a big problem with these getting on your vehicle, examine your surroundings, examine where you're parking your vehicle, either at work or at home, maybe even in a business, but 
if you're parking near a place that has a lot of mulch, maybe old mulch, or they just mulched uh, the property that you're at, this is a very common problem. But if it's a little stubborn and you need a little bit of help, you can use your stoner terminator tar and sap remover. We got this on a microfiber. You can spray it directly on the spot. If it's single stage paint, don't do this. But if you've got two stage paint with clear on it, which that's most modern vehicles, although some newer white vehicles can be single stage, button up any remaining residue. Then we're going to give this a good rinse. And now we've got a washed and decontaminated panel free of rail dust, artillery fungus, sap, tar. We've got a silky, smooth finish. Whatever protection we put on here is now going to bond with the clear coat versus having anything in the middle. It's going to last longer, perform better. Your vehicle is going to look a lot better as well because now shiny paint comes from smooth paint. We don't have anything on the surface. It's going to look fantastic. A few moments later. All right, we did a quick paint enhancement with 3D Speed and my SPTA polisher. Wasn't chasing all the swirls and scratches. More than anything, we were able to remove the marring from our clay towel and decontamination process. Then we topped it with a ceramic sealant. Tires and wheels are done as well and dressed. Our McKees 37 SiO2 tire dressing looks great. This vehicle has been completely transformed five and a half hours. It was not an easy or quick process. So whenever you're battling extreme artillery fungus like this, don't expect it to be a quick process, but it is doable with the right products and tools. So I'm going to put the links to everything that I used in this video down below. If you guys have a similar process or, or a tip to be able to share for those that are struggling with the same issue, by all means, Please drop that information in the comment section down below. This is a way. This is not the only way. Uh, but this worked for me in this moment. And uh, hopefully it can help some of you guys. So give us a thumbs up. If you enjoy content like this, make sure you subscribe. Hit that notification bell off to the side. Stay tuned for future videos and details that we have coming out. Hopefully we'll be able to go live soon and maybe answer some of you guys' questions. But it's almost 100 degrees out today. We're going to wrap this one up. I'm headed to the pool with my kids. But we will see you guys in the next detail. Have a great day.